Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Agretzko, Season 2, Episode 6. So yeah, we're uh, back here with another episode this week, and I'm excited to see where this goes, because last episode, Anai seems to have come around. Um, thanks to this uh, festival, thanks to this uh, little thing that the company put on, he was allowed to show off his cooking skills, and the compliments and the warm reception to them seem to turn his entire viewpoint on his co-workers, uh, especially Retzko, around. And this all started because uh, the hippo girl, whose name I can't think of at the moment, um, she complimented his food and stuff w before and was just super motherly and awesome to him when they were just talking in the office. And she helped him, uh, well, step up and and start cooking the uh, takiyaki or whatever it was. No, it wasn't takiyaki. Whatever they were working on for the festival. So that was a big uh, point for the last episode. And yeah, I have no idea where this season's going to go, but we do still have... Um, that one guy, the, the guy who is also at the driver's training classes with Retzko, I can't think of his name right now either, but he's becoming a big thing, and there's kind of this hint that maybe is going to end up with him, which I hope is just another one of her uh, temporary relationships, like in season one with uh, Sinosuke, because I still think that Haida is the best fit for her. I just really do. I, I just... I don't sense a good enough romantic connection between her and this other guy in order to really... In fact, I don't sense much of a romantic connection at all. There's a little bit of playfulness with it, but there's not enough to make them a couple in my eyes. So if they do become one, it, it's got to be temporary. Otherwise, it's going to feel excessively forced and unnatural. But I guess we'll have to see. I guess we'll have to see. Um, we are only doing the one episode again this week instead of two or whatnot. Um, just because, again, there's a lot I have to get to still. So, yeah. <laughs> I still have to record she as well. But uh, we're just going to get on with this, not waste any more time. Um, so when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. Okay, and we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So there's really three things to talk about. First off, a nigh. Anai has started selling 500 yen bento boxes to his co-workers. And they all love them because, you know, he's good at making food. And he's getting along better with everyone because of it. Because he's just, well, found something to bond with them over. He's found something that they like him for and appreciate him for. And it's allowing them to create connections. Which is great. I think that's awesome. Um, but that was just kind of a little bit at the beginning. The meat of this episode focused on two main factors in Retzko's life. Her dating life, as well as her, you know, driving course. So, on the dating scene, her mother is trying to get her to date again. Um, and tells her about this speed dating thing. Now, I, I mentioned it during the reaction, but we see that... Because of her mother's constant, incessant nagging on this, it has gotten into Retzko's mind. And I'm not saying that Retzko necessarily isn't interested in eventually finding love. But we know that she's not been currently interested. She's wanted to wait and just put herself first for the time being. So her, con her, her worry, her panic, as she puts it, and everything is a result of her mother's constant incessant nagging. And it's 
basically false panic. It's her mind falsely telling her that she's uh, worried about this when in reality she's not. And it's all because her mother has made her believe that she has very little time. As we see in this episode, it's like, oh, all the good men will be gone, which is not how anything works, by the way. Um, you could wait till you're in your 50s or 60s and still find the right one for you. Uh, another big part of this that both her mother and her have been, like, focusing on, and I think it's, for her, it's probably because of her mother that she's focused on it, is the entire thing with the money situation. Um, because even in this, like, when she's doing the speed dating, the poet guy, she's like, that's just slang for poor. She seems to put that at a very high regard. And maybe in Japan that is a bigger thing. Maybe people do look at that more. And technically here in America, people look at that a lot. But I really don't think people should. Money has nothing to do with love. And if you're, if you're, if one of your standards for finding a husband or wife or just partner in general is how much they make, then you're going to miss out on finding true love and end up marrying someone just because they make good money. And it, it, I mean, that's not always the case, but a lot of times it is. A lot of people marry just because of the money and they end up getting divorced like only a couple years later because they realize that they don't actually love each other. They only love the uh, so-called security of the money that is made. And the problem is that does, that's not what makes a relationship. Love has no sense of monetary value. It doesn't matter how much you make. It doesn't matter how much your partner makes. Love is blind to that. So every time that's brought up in this series, it just bothers the hell out of me. It really does. Um, but yeah, the speed dating doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Uh, Retzko and Gori both find the same guy that they're interested in, but it ends up he's a fake, he's a scam who's only there, uh, he's like placed there to look good and everything. Um, which doesn't make much sense, like why would they do that? Like it, it doesn't make the other people there look better, it actually makes them look worse and I mean, I guess if it's a paid speed dating thing, it just brings in customers over and over. I mean, and if that's the case, then you don't want to go to that speed dating thing anyway. If they're just trying to focus on the money rather than helping people find love. But like I said, the second aspect was the driver's training course that retzko has been taking. And we see in here she continues to do excellently at it, and even by the end, passes. She gets her license. She wants to tell Tadano, but we find out that Tadano, his course has run out, and he's just stopped coming. He's basically quit. Um, and that's kind of where the episode leaves off, so it's like we don't know exactly where that's going to go yet. Retzko has seemed to form a little bit of an interest in Tadano, even though there's not really any, as I mentioned in the pre-thoughts, romantic connection between them. There's nothing to actually connect them. It's it's basically like, oh, Retzko just suddenly likes, the, likes him, even though they don't have any real romantic chemistry. So it comes off as really forced and just fake. Um... But like I said, if it's this temporary thing that happens, like, oh, she's temporarily into him, then whatever. Um, the question is, how are we going to see him again if he's quit? Maybe he will come back, or maybe she'll end up being weird and stalking him and finding out where he lives and shit. Yeah, that would be weird. <laughs> or heck, maybe on some off chance her mother will end up setting her up with him. That would be interesting. Um, excuse me. But yeah, not much huge development with this one. Not much huge big stuff happened. 
um, outside of that. I mean, Retzko can drive now. I don't know if that's going to be a big thing going forward, but I it might be for one or two episodes, but that's all I can really see it for. Um, and then there's the entire thing with uh, Anai, which I think will be noticeable going forward. Um, like, Anai's entire plot line, you could say, was the arc of the first half of this season, but I don't think it's going to be as major a component for the rest of these episodes this season. And the dating thing, the dating thing's probably the most relevant. Because that, that seems to be a core theme of this season. I guess we'll just find out. In the meantime, tell me what you thought of this episode down in the comments below, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time. Hey everyone, Connie here, and thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. If you want to check out any of my social media links and more, please check them out over to the side. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave those down below. In the meantime, though, thank you so much once again for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.